Good evening, everybody. This is Dr. Palacios, and I am here to show you a small presentation on the COVID-19 story, pathophysiology and the immune response. So here, what I want, my purpose of this presentation is to show you how the virus enters into the system and, and how your immune system reacts to it too. I made it simple enough so everyone can understand it, whether you're a scientist, or just a regular layman's person, a non-scientist, just to say it that way. So let's get started, and I promise you, you'll learn something. So first, who am I? I am a naturopathic physician and licensed in the state of Connecticut. So we tend to specialize more in natural therapies. I am bilingual, English and Spanish, and myself and from Chile. And as, I, as you may or may have known, coronavirus has reached South America. By the way, today is the 27th of March, 2020. And as and I believe as of yesterday or even today, uh, the United States passed the number of cases in the world of with 87,000. I mean, the number keeps rising. So this is a very serious situation that we're suffering right now as a pandemic. Uh, so yeah, this presentation, I want to show you, you know, some tips, some things you can do, and also just basic education, because the more one is educated, the better it is, the better it is for you to make more informed decisions. So objectives and goals, what you're, what I want you to get out of this presentation is first how a virus enters into your body because it is different from bacteria, just to make that clarification. Uh, how also viruses hijack the cell, because typically bacteria, they just cause damage and they kill cells just by bleeding, just, just by releasing those damaging toxins. But viruses, what they do is they go inside the cell, they hijack the information and then they release it. And then they multiply and infect more and so on. Uh, and I'm also going to show you how the COVID-19 virus goes into the cell and hijacks the system. And, also, and then we're going to talk about the immune system, the response to the virus, which will be new for a lot of you. So please bear with me. And eventually I want to finish with a visualization technique to kind of help boost your immunity indirectly. And I'll get to that how. So first, I want to get to how the immune system, I'm sorry, how the virus enters the immune system or the body. So on the top left, you'll see the virus itself. You see it's around, this little ball is like a membrane. And then the little uh, spikes right here, these are called S protein spikes, or S stands for spike. And that's what gives the name Corona which comes from the Greek or Latin, corona, you know, because it looks like a little crown. And that's going to be the main player of how the virus attaches to the specific cells. So the virus, say somebody, you know, you gave the hand to somebody or somebody sneezed or coughed and then you got some of those droplets around your face. And then, it, you know, if you have the habit of like, you know, biting the nails or doing things like that, what happens is uh, you're going to eventually push the particles of the virus into the system through the mucous membranes, which will be the mouth, the nose, and the, and the eyes. Uh, so it is, you know, you have to be careful. That is why washing your hands is very important no matter where you go, especially if you haven't been wearing gloves and you go outside and touch everywhere because you never know when a carrier was there or even if the carrier knew that he was infected because it, many people that are asymptomatic. So if you go to public places, I do advise you to wear a mask uh, just for benefit of the doubt. And so once the virus goes into the, if it enters into the nose and mouth or to the eyes, it's a little bit more difficult, but it could happen. Uh, what's going to happen is it's going to enter through the right here to the top, the orifices, you know, with the pharynx. And then it eventually the virus will travel down to the lungs. 
and right here you have below the diaphragm. So the lungs are, those are the areas where oxygen exchange happens. So for example, in the picture on the bottom in this slide, you'll see the alveolus. Alveolus is a name for just meaning tiny air sac. So at the very end of the lung, there's this sac that expands and contracts, and that helps to exchange oxygen with carbon dioxide. So when you inhale, the oxygen goes through the red blood cells and that's being sent from the heart because the, the heart and the lungs are right next to each other. And then the red blood cells expel out CO2 or carbon dioxide. So that exchange is typical of a normal uh, function of the lung and heart. So the blood gets oxygen and delivers out carbon dioxide, and that's what you breathe out. So that process gets interrupted when the virus enters the system. And that's because here in this top, uh, top right picture, you'll see there's two kinds of cells, pneumocyte type 2 and then pneumocyte type 1. Both pneumocyte literally just means lung cell. So there's one type and then type two, type one, type two. And then you have other cells that help with the structure of the uh, lung itself, including some white blood cells called macrophages or monocytes right here. But going back to the, now going to the, uh, the left picture is a lot more simple. So you see these red blood cells, this is where the oxygen exchange happens. And the pneumocytes type 1 are the ones that provide that space and structure for the lungs to expand. So that's key for you to exchange oxygen and carbon dioxide and for you eventually to have energy through your whole body because oxygen gives energy to every cell of your body and every organ. So here's what happens when COVID-19 uh, gets put into the game here. So this is the whole structure on the right side. You see the virus is, um, it has a layer, like a circular layer, and then the S proteins, and then inside it carries genetic information. And it's, in this case, this virus has an RNA type of protein information. I'm sorry, RNA genetic information. And that's and, you know, viruses, they have DNA or RNA type of genome. And in this case, the, this virus carries an RNA. So the thing with how the virus infects the lungs is because of this S protein, you know, the thing that makes it look like a crown, attaches to a, mem a protein in the pneumocyte type 1, specifically to that, to that cell. And it's called angiotensin converting enzyme 2 or ACE2. This enzyme is also involved in blood pressure regulation, but again, that's another story for another time. But this is where the virus attaches and then it starts infecting the cell. It because the proteins are very similar to each other, so it kind of fits together like a lock and key. So the virus goes in. This is another picture showing how COVID-19 enters. So this is the membrane, this whole thing is the cell and this is the virus, the virus goes in, it enters the cell and once the virus gets access in inside of the cell, it just disintegrates and lets its RNA genome available so it can hijack all of the resources of the cell. So this is the coding and then it's basically going to uh, use the ribosomes of the cell. It's going to help create proteins of the virus so it can replicate and it can create more viruses, as you see up here on the, on the right side. And that virus eventually is going to leave into the outside of the cell and replicate because now, I mean, it's already multiplying inside of the cell, so the virus job is just to keep infecting other other cells so it's gonna multiply and invade other other cells and the problem is these are pneumocytes these are lung cells so the more viruses you have 
in the lungs, the more damage it's going to cause. And that's why, you know, it's going to end up leading to less intake of oxygen, therefore leading to the shortness of breath, which is one of the big symptoms in COVID-19. So the virus gets replicated. But here's what happens. So the virus is infecting other cells. But then the cell itself, obviously, is probably going to die. But before it dies, it's going to release a molecule. Well, it's actually a class of different molecules called interferon. There's many kinds of interferon. But these interferons, these are chemicals that boost immune cells, or at least like signal the white blood cells and other cells too, to kind of like warn them to say, okay, there's an infection going on. Come check it out. Other cells, beware, something's going wrong. And here is a picture of a damaged lung. Uh, these are called opacities, which is from a CT scan, which many people who have an advance or at least a lot of damage from the coronavirus are, you know, affected. So the white spots in the lungs are basically the damaged areas. And that's why it causes shortness of breath because you're really damaging the lungs, which are the main, uh, the main exchange of oxygen. Uh, there's a lot of inflammation going on and from that inflammation it also helps you know it also prevents the right exchange but that inflammation is also bringing a lot of neutrophils and macrophages which are the white blood cells that uh, attack immediately they're part of the innate immune response so what happens when the virus gets detected so this picture will show you how it works so right at the bottom here, you see the viral component. It's known as an antigen. Antigen is a foreign substance that the body does not recognize. So the white blood cell, typically a macrophage or a neutrophil, will identify it or at least will present it to a type of T cell. Okay. So T, in this case, will be a T helper. There are many kinds of T cells, but the main two that we're talking about here are the killer T cells, which is right down below, and then the T helper cells. The T helpers are basically is what the name implies. They help spread the message to the other immune cells. And this is part of the adaptive immune response. This is when now the virus is detected and the body knows who to attack and what to attack and where to go. So this is this typically takes about three to four days after you've been infected with the virus for this to take place. Uh, so the T helper cell then calls the B cells and then the B cells are gonna create plasma cells. I mean, you know, they convert into plasma cells and then these plasma cells create these little proteins called antibodies. You probably have heard of the word antibody. So what an antibody is, an antibody is created out of the antigen. So the antibody has an attachment you see like the little Y's on the, like the little forks here, they go and attach into this antigen. So the virus and whatever looks like that virus is gonna get uh, targeted and then the virus cannot enter into other cells because it's gonna be like glued in into these antibodies. The macrophages here that also the T cells, the T helper cells get to help uh, these macrophages are going to detect those antibodies and they're basically going to eat the whole complex. So that's a way to kill the virus. And then these killer T cells and, and other ones called natural killer cells, those are the ones that go into the, they go into the cell and then they make sure that the cell is uh, infected or non-infected. And there are specific proteins that tell that. So if it's infected, what the natural killer cell is going to do is going to go and tell the cell, okay, it's time for you to die. But then when the cell dies, all the viruses inside of the cell also die with it. So you see there's a lot of complexity going on with the immune response. And trust me, it's a lot more complicated than this. But I'm, hopefully this is making some sense to see how your immune system is actually very targeting 
to the specific viruses and other toxins and pathogens that you, that you are exposed to throughout your life. And if it wasn't for this, we wouldn't last, we wouldn't live as long as we live. So eventually all of these cells get together to work and eventually they all go to the area of infection or wherever the virus is spreading. And then, you know, like you see in the circle, it's going to surround the virus and the virus has no chance unless it adapts to mutate. But, you know, in this case, it doesn't seem to be the, the case. I mean, I haven't really read up on the specificity of the viral mutation. Uh, but you see in the middle is the virus, the plasma cell or B cell is here, sending the antibodies. This is the T cell. This is a neutrophil and the macrophage. All of these guys are going to end up basically cleaning up, clean up the damage and destroy the, the virus itself. And then you might ask, so what happens to the lung? Is, is the lung just going to be permanently damaged? Uh, the lung is damaged, but it's not supposed to be permanent. So on here, you see alveolar cells. These are the pneumocyte type 1. These are the cells that the virus attacks. So when it attacks, it removes this, this cell, it removes this cell, so this cell gets destroyed and, you know, there's inflammation and lack of gas exchange. But what happens now is the pneumocytes type 2, if you remember, which allow, which help the gas exchange take place, basically, they are going to fill the dead pneumocyte type 1 and they're going to basically just be there as a replacement, like a bench warmer. They're kind of like the bench warmers. And then as time passes, which could be a couple of weeks to, to sometimes to six months or even later, depending on how much damage there is on the lungs, this pneumocyte type one will go through a process called differentiation to become alveolar cells and then become pneumocytes type one again. And that is how the lung can actually regenerate itself. So there is hope. If you get through the worst, there is hope that your lungs can recover. But you have to be careful to not go back to your habits that irritate the lungs, like smoking or being exposed to contaminants or noxious gases. So you need to rest for a long period of time if you want this to take place. So I hope that made sense. Uh, if you're a science person and this kind of, you know, implied some things that made sense to you, then you can use this to kind of like visualize yourself fighting this infection. But if not, I actually made a, a little analogy to kind of help you get through this process. And I'm mentioning this because visualization is actually something very, very important for treatments of chronic diseases or even treatments of where, you know, you, you think all hope is lost. So one of the things about visualization is actually being encouraged a lot for cancer patients to do, especially when they go through chemo, because, you know, people, when they go through chemo, they lose their hair, their nails become brittle, they become very weak, pale. So sometimes they feel worse and the actual cancer is making them to fail. But the visualization techniques actually helps them to improve their mood because they're, they're being, how would I say it? They're being, they are like reprogramming their own belief system that the cancer cells are dying. So eventually, so that inside they're getting better. So visualization is indirectly related to better immune system because it actually helps you boost your mood and, you know, induce your relaxation and decrease the stress. So indirectly, it does help the immune system by those conditions. So this is the visualization technique. First, I want you to choose an uplifting song as you, as you do this type of activity. Uh, mine is actually Princess of the Universe by Queen. If you don't know, you can Google it or YouTube it. It's an amazing song, like it gets your blood pumping, and it's a really good to create this type of visualization. So 
these are the techniques. So you visualize the virus, and then you also visualize your immune cells. And then you visualize the repair going on in the lungs. And this is how you can help by using those images. So here we go. So say your body, you know, we know that our bodies is this network of different functions, different organs that have different functions for you to provide enough life for however long you live. So it perhaps it allows you to eat, to breathe, to think, to feel, uh, to nourish your body. So that it's more like a, a city in a way, because a city also has that type of analogy, because a city has also different kinds of establishments that do different things. Um, you know, there needs to be a garbage. There needs to be. At disposal, banking, uh, professionals, um, other types of jobs that require, you know, more like hands-on things, but all of them are necessary. So in the case, on the right picture, this is going to be the lung. The lung is going to be one, a town of the city. And the thing is, because the virus is very specific to the lung, there's going to be the lungs is what we're going to focus on. So you see the houses here? Each house is going to represent a lung cell or a pneumocyte type 1 or type 2, whatever you prefer it to be. So it's a lung cell. So here's the story. The virus is a thief who has that specific lung. Remember those S spike proteins? And it's going to break into those houses because it has the specific key. I can, I can open it. The, this thief has tried every other side of the city. He hasn't been successful, but he did find this part, which will be this town, which will be the lung, and it's able to break in and go inside. And just like any good virus or thief does, it hijacks all the information. It takes all the wealth out of that house. So it's going to take the money, the phone, and it's going to call all of his bodies and say, Guys, we found the right place. I have the key. We're going to make fortunes out of this. And he's also hijacking the system to tell every, every of his friends where to come to do the robberies. So that's, again, like the virus doing its own, you know, multiplying to infect all the other cells. But the, then the thing, too, is that thief, once it's done in the house, it burns it down because it doesn't need it anymore. And this is where the response comes in. So once the house is burned down, there's an alarm system going on. This will be like the interferons. So the first course of actions is going to be the policemen and the firefighters. The firefighters are obviously going to help re reduce the inflammation, or in this case, the fire. And the policemen, are, those are going to be your immediate response to the you know, to the robberies, to the crimes that are going on, because now these thieves are everywhere. So the police has to get action into this, and they're going to, and if they're, I mean, it's just getting out of control, they're going to have to call their backup. And this is how the backup works. So you have the firemen calling the police force, and then the police force calls the state police, and then the state police, if they notice it's getting out of hand, they're going to call the CIA to get into the hacking system of the, of the thieves, and the SWAT team, those will be your T cells, your T killer cells. And the hacking system, the CIA, will be like your B cells because your B cells are, are specific to create antibodies. And the CIA is very specific to track these thieves by their technology, by technology in general. Is this making sense? I hope so. And hopefully by the end, all the robberies are being dealt with all the thieves are being taken and then the police, the, mil the military and the service people do their job. But then the damage is already done. However, it doesn't mean that it's over. Just like the lung cells can repair themselves again, you can also rebuild your house back in shape. Except in this difference, you know, you're just going to need more help, more people to actually do this. 
but if you do it with time, the burnt house can become again a normal house and you know it can repair and the, the town can thrive again after all of its losses. Okay, so I believe that is all I have for you. Please try this visualization technique with a song if it helps. Um, again, please stay safe, stay at home. If you know somebody who is infected, please send them, you know, just good vibes. Let them know you're there to talk. Um, you know, you can't necessarily be there, but at least, you know, webcamming, talking on the phone, those are all very special ways to keep in contact with the people. And again, my heart goes to all of them who are losing their lives to this. This is a very serious situation. And may we all stay safe. And let's hope for the best. I hope this was helpful again. And best of luck, everyone.